Hi everyone, this is Jose for On Tour, traveling to the last borough that became a part of New York City. The borough with some of the oldest history in all of New York State. Let's take a trip uptown to explore some of the legends of the Bronx. Borough of the Bronx, the only borough in New York City that starts with the, the Bronx. The Bronx was the last borough to become a part of New York City and also one of its oldest. The Bronx is an old soul and it also has a couple titles attached to its name, the world's largest and the world's oldest. With that blend, it creates its own mix to be a part of New York City and create its own story and history. When you first think about Legends of the Bronx, Yankee Stadium immediately comes to mind. The Yankees are not just a New York team. They represent America. They're America's team. And dating back to their birth in 1901, then rebranding to the Highlanders in 1903, then the Yankees in 1913, instantly, you knew this was a gentleman's clubhouse. No other team in the history of major leagues is more known or popular and no other team has had more victories than the Yankees. From the legendary Babe Ruth, to record breakers Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris, to the world-class Derek Jeter, this is a clubhouse every kid aspires to play for. Legends as big as their persona. Yankee Stadium is class, and the first thing you see when crossing from Manhattan to the Bronx, the towering icon of 27 world championships, seemingly ripped out of the history books and made into a real life coliseum. I first visited on the last week of the old stadium and the energy was on another level. So much excitement in a packed house, it elevated the game to a top tier status. So talk about interesting and unique, then let's talk about the high bridge. This overpass has always intrigued me when I'm driving under it on the Major Deegan, and when I research its history, there's so much more to it that I can't believe this towering walkway hid in plain sight, and not just for myself, for many travelers and probably New Yorkers as well. So this is the high bridge, and it's crazy. A guy like me who's scared of heights managed to climb this giant. The High Bridge is the oldest bridge in New York City, and it was closed for more than 50 years. It was finally restored back to life in 2015. The High Bridge is the oldest bridge in New York City, and 138 feet from above the street below. This bridge was originally constructed in 1848 as part of the Croton Aqueduct system. The bridge and pedestrian walkway became so popular that it filled with not just New Yorkers, but tourists as well. It opened up new life for the Bronx, creating restaurants and constant travel of ships up and down the Harlem River. The High Bridge actually had the second largest park in New York City. Unfortunately, it went out of commission with the construction of the Major Deegan and Harlem River Drive. The bridge became a hazard to the ships because of the columns, and the water became too polluted from the moving vehicles. The bridge was set to be torn down as early as the 1920s but the people of the Bronx stood by it all those years and it took so long, but they brought it back to life.
the focus of my tour was simply the west side of the Bronx, but it took deviations and I went to other areas. I feel that people only know of the Bronx as the land of co-ops, but it's big. It has tons of history and it has hidden gems and many people just haven't been informed of these gems. And I wanted to look for other legends. People know that the Bronx was the birthplace of hip hop, but do they know that the Bronx has a crescent shaped beach and it's named Orchard Beach? Or how about parklands and greenery in the Bronx? A lot of people don't know the Bronx has the largest park in all of New York City and that's Pelham Bay Park. A park that is more than three times the size of Central Park. And not just a park. When you look at a map, you see the hilly terrains and large massive parks in the Bronx. But that feeling of driving the streets, seeing all the different buildings and mixtures of communities made me take a walk in Kingsbridge. As you see the towering armory at the heart of the neighborhood. It's known as the world's largest armory bringing in vendors of all types to fill the gates right outside. We're walking past the amalgamated co-ops, the first co-ops built in the country, and Van Cortlandt Park, Walking its trails made me feel like it was gigantic, and it is. It's known as New York City's third largest park, with everything from playgrounds to natural forests. And I took some time to marvel at the Bronx Victory Memorial in Pelham Bay Park. It's dedicated to all the Bronx servicemen who died during World War I. This memorial that's nestled in the park is the perfect representation of the Bronx, a golden monument hidden from outsiders. Where my tour landed me, completely changes what you know about the Bronx. The borough which I still call the land of giants because the history, the tales and monuments can go on for days. At the end of my tour, I couldn't think of a better way to close my trip than taking a drive to City Island. Another piece of treasure found in the Bronx. It's just so relaxing passing through this mile and a half stretch of fishing island. I decided to take a pause. Sitting on a bench and taking in the scenery, watching the beautiful yachts and flow of the waves, it makes you transcend into another place. You forget you were still in New York City. This little island on the northeastern part of the Bronx has history that dates back to its European settlers in 1614. It has New York in name, but it truly feels like a New England fishing village, a paradise for seafood lovers. Bronx is a treasure chest of history, originality, and foundation. The Bronx has maturity and the perfect blend that makes New York City great. This is Jose for On Tour. If you like what you've seen today, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and share. If you want to know more about the places I've been to, please see the links below. Until next time.